Howdy folks, and welcome back to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We finally made it to Athens in company with Herodotus. We've been introduced to Pericles, the father of democracy, and it turns out that he's just the same as everybody else. He's not prepared to give us the time of day, and it's all about what I can do for him first. Pericles presented us with a couple of tasks. The first of which involved finding out why his best bud, Metiochos, hadn't turned up to see his speech at the Pernix. Turned out Metiochus was kind of tied up, quite literally, with a whole bunch of cobras let loose in his house. And this is the fellow responsible. I'm trying to get close enough to him to stick a knife in his back, but that's not too easy. His encampment is surrounded by his little pet snakes. And one thing that you're going to learn, either the easy way or the hard way when you're playing this game, particularly when you come to explore ancient tombs, are infested with these buggers is that cobras are bloody deadly. Two or three bites and you are done. Okay. Well, he knows he's under attack, but he doesn't know exactly where I am. Firing from the bushes. Oh. Oh, he knows where the shots came from. He's moving over to investigate. See if we can get another headshot on him. Damn it, hold still. Oh, nice. And again. Yeah, I think... Whoa, okay, he still hasn't actually seen exactly where the arrows are coming from. He's still heading to the spot where I fired from. Come on. One more. Okay, maybe more than one more. Got it. should keep friends with Pericles safe. Right. Oh, and he had some fairly nice stuff as well. Very nice pair of daggers. Okay. The poisoner is dead. Let's head back to Metiochos and give him the good news. I have to say, old Metiochos does take his security very seriously. None of his doors open. <laughs> you have to climb the walls to get into his house. Which kind of begs the question, is how the original assassins got in in the first place? Well, probably the same way I did. Anyway, no doubt he'll be pleased to see me. Oh, there he is. So, I sorted out your poisoner problem. Looks like your situation's improved since we last met. The danger has passed for now. But while those monsters are out there, no one is safe. A group of fishermen tied you up. They were being used by a snake dealer working for enemies of Athens. What did you do with them? I showed them the error of their ways and sent them on their way. They won't be bothering you again. I'm glad no blood was shed. But how do you know they won't return? I made it very clear that doing anything stupid would make me angry. Well, that must have been a terrifying experience for them. Thank you for your help, Mystios. I'll be sure to mention this to Pericles. Yeah, you do that. Okay. One task down, two to go. Pericles is also friends with a famous Greek sculptor, Phidias who apparently is in a bit of trouble, under house arrest on a charge of impiety, impiety? I've never been entirely sure how you pronounce that. Anyway, why would you build a ship there? This is the middle of central Athens. The sea's ten miles away. <laughs> oh, whatever. Anyway, Phidias is under house arrest at his workshop, just over there. Now, the name for Deus cropped up in the last episode when we were gatecrashing the Cult of Cosmos' annual general meeting. One of them was being disciplined for failing to kill for Deus. So while I've never met this guy personally, I do have a vested interest in keeping him alive. In fact, it's likely that this charge of impiety has been trumped up by the cult. Either way, we're going to need to get in and speak to him. That could be difficult. Stop. I can't let you go any further. Oh, you can trust me. Stand aside, this is important. So is keeping people out. Maybe you can see Phidias after his trial, if the people spare his life. Huh. Okay, how to proceed? I can either tell them the truth, Pericles sent me, or make some shit up. It's been so long since Phidias and I have seen each other. You understand, don't you? Oh! Oh, come to pay him a last visit before the trial. He's as good as dead, you know. Better make this one count. 
Just don't tell anyone I was here. Sure, sure. Well, he seemed very understand. I could have also just sneaked in around the back. But anyway, I'm in. And Fidias is up there. Okay. Well, let's hope he's not easily startled. Which he probably is, considering people are trying to kill him. Yoo-hoo! Sorry about that. How did you get past the guard? No one gets past the guard. Relax. Ricli sent me. Ah, praise Athena. I knew he'd send help. I was worried they sent someone after me. Uh, they probably have. He sent me to get you out of Athens. So he knows about the plot. You mean the trial? From what I've seen, you don't stand a chance. Ha! The people love me. I am the Fidias. But there are others. Look. Oh, maybe a clue to the identity of another cultist? Malaka. It isn't the trial Pericles is saving you from. These are instructions to murder you. Who wrote this? I don't know who to trust. I'm just an artist. I just wanted to create. Please, what am I to do? First, you need to pull yourself together. You're on trial, the people are against you, and now I find that the cult want to kill you. Uh... I said pull yourself together! Yes, of course. Okay, we need to know more. Cleon said you're wasting the people's drachmi. If he had his way, he'd serve them your head. Cleon mentioned me? That's going to hurt Pericles. First impiety, now theft. After all we've done for this city. Oh, it is impiety. Oh, well, that clears that up. You and Pericles seem close. For Pericles and me, it started with our love of Athens. Our differences push us to greatness. That is true friendship. Well, we need to get you out of here. All right, we need to go. Do you have any idea where I can take you? South of Athens, there's an island called Seriphos. My friend Theras lives there. When I discovered the plot against me, I sent word to him. If anyone can help us, he can. Any clues he has of the cultists' identities, I want them. Yes, yes, anything. A guard! I'll distract them while you sneak out. Meet me tonight to set sail for Seriphos. Don't show your face until you see me at the docks. I understand. You didn't really think I'd let you come and go as you please, did you? Now, where are you? Right. I don't really want to go around just slaughtering Athenian soldiers. Well, not as long as I'm in Athens. So can I sneak out of here? Oh, apparently not. <laughs> I screwed that up. I'm just going to have to make a run for it. No, get off the door. Get off the door. Run, you stupid woman. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I could have gone better, uh, but it could also have gone a, a lot worse. I need to get hidden quick before more guards turn up and join in the chase. I'll just climb to the top of this roof and then lie low for a while. That should do. Yeah, they've lost sight of me. It's all good. Didn't have to kill anybody. Right, next step, escape from Athens. Meet Phidias at night at the port of Piraeus. Okay. In reality, the port of Piraeus is about 10 miles from the city of Athens itself. Uh, here in the game, it's about 500 yards down the road. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining or anything. Right, there he is. Not doing a particularly good job of hiding, is he? Good. You made it. I was beginning to worry. I told you I'd get you out of Athens. So you did. Who's this so-called friend of yours we're meeting anyway? Can your friend be trusted? Theras and I have been friends for a long time. I just sent word telling him where to meet us. All right, let's do it. Wasting time will only get us into trouble. Let's head to Seriphos while we still can. 
So, we're heading for the island of Seraphos. Now, my sense of geography isn't that bad. I mean, I can point to Greece on a map, but individual Greek islands? Not so much. Luckily, there is a map in the game. It is actually a fair old distance away from Athens. You have to skirt all the way around Attica and then head east into the Aegean. But rather than just skipping straight to our arrival, I thought we'd take in some of the sights and sounds of ancient Greece. The shipyards that built the navy that made Athens so powerful. And then enjoy a beautiful moonlit cruise across the Aegean. This really is an astonishingly pretty game. And before too long, the island of Seraphos. Just have to get the ship docked. We'll make land for at the port of Cora. There isn't actually a huge amount here on the island of Seraphos. Uh, there are a couple of landmarks, but that's really about it. This is not one of the islands where you're going to be spending a huge amount of your time in the game. Basically, it pretty much just exists as a drop off point for Phidias. It's good to see you alive and well, Phidias. And you, Thiras. As you can see, I didn't get here alone. Ah, yes. The kind and thoughtful hero you mentioned in your letter. That letter got here fast. I'm glad I could get him out alive. And for that heroism, I found some information on a man named Brisson who's plotting Phidias' early demise. Hopefully you can make something of this clue. Uh -huh. I can. Please give Pericles my thanks and my farewell. And be careful. I still believe many in Athens are in danger. So, this has given us a clue to the identity of the very unfortunate cultist that we met getting branded in the cave underneath the Oracle of Delphi for failing to kill Phidias the first time around. He didn't strike me as much of a challenge when I first met him, all curled up into a ball snivelling as he was. Um, but let's get him unveiled, so we can plot his death. I swear on my life and the lives I will take from others, I will not fail the cosmos again. Yeah, I think you will. Well, you will if I have anything to do about it. Uh, we're going to kill you, and I'm going to take your stuff. First, however, we still have one more job to perform for Pericles. So that means we're heading back to Athens. Okay, I got sidetracked again. Not straight back to Athens. We're just stopping off for a spot of assassination along the way because from the pile of letters that we stole from the cult underneath the Oracle of Delphi we did manage to already identify several cult members and one of them is hiding out here. Well, he's not hiding. He doesn't know anybody's after him. This is a member of the subsect of the cult known as the Heroes of the Cult. They're basically the cult's enforcers and hard men. This one goes by the very modest title of Okitos the Great. Well, we're going to see just exactly how great he thinks he is. Not entirely sure what this place is. Seems busy. Let's check it out. That's him. Plenty of guards around as well. That is going to be a problem. See, I, I don't really want to be committing bloody murder <laughs> right in front of a whole bunch of Athenian soldiers. They tend to object to that sort of thing for some strange reason. Apparently, nobody in the ancient Athenian military had a sense of humour. Oh, hang on. Where's he going? Oh, that's good. Yeah, you keep heading in that direction, Sunshine. You just... You just keep heading away from all of those pesky interfering Athenian soldiers. And I'll introduce you to the business end of my knife. Yeah, this is perfect. Ah, a Temple of Poseidon. Okay, that explains all the gods. Right. This is going to hurt you a lot more than it's... Well, it's not going to hurt him that much. <laughs> well, I took half of his health off. I don't do enough assassination damage at the moment to just one-shot kill somebody as hard as this. So I'm going to have to finish him off the old-fashioned way. Now, unfortunately, 
one of the skills that I have not yet invested in is the shield breaking ability. So this is going to be problematic. Also, I'm not using heavy blunt or heavy bladed weapons, so I can't just smash his shield with those. Still, I've got this. I probably should be parrying attacks more. That will create an opening as well. But hey, the old Sparta kick works. As does the bull rush ability. Oh, he does that. There we go. Turn this back. Very silly. You'll regret that. Got the poisons working on him now as well. And he's down. And the crowd goes wild. Now I just have to confirm the kill. And take his stuff. And hopefully find a clue that will lead me to yet another cultist. Well, I enjoyed that. Well, look at that. Who would have guessed it? Oh, and my first piece of the Amazon set. Yeah. This is basically the Wonder Woman set. <laughs> it's a very nice set of armor. Uh, once you've got all five of the pieces, the Amazon set returns 2% of the damage you do as healing. So very, very nice. And we've got a couple of clues as to the identity of other cultists. I don't think we'll be going after that guy anytime soon. He seems to be level 50. And there we go, the Amazon's Tacits. They're not bad. You can tell just from looking at it that the full set is going to be very Wonder Woman-y once it's complete. So, another cultist down. Now, there was something that Pericles wanted us to do, wasn't there? We should we should probably get on that. Right turn, back to the harbour of Piraeus and Athens. Jingles, that's your left. <laughs> oh, is that another cultist on the island of Salamis? Oh, well. All right, then. If I must... I know, I know, it's impossible for me to concentrate on one thing. I'm constantly getting distracted by shiny cultists, but they all need killing. I mean, they're not going to kill themselves, are they? Now, the cultist here in the marble quarry on the island of Salamis is the whiny little bitch who was getting slapped around for failing to kill Phidias the first time around. I have... Respect, by the way. I now have the shield breaker ability. And there it is. Although at rank 1, it only works against small shields. Oh, that's going to be a problem. I've now committed enough bloody violence and murder. Well, bloody violence and murder in public. Bloody violence and murder in private is absolutely fine. But I've now actually had a bounty placed on my head, and that means that other mercenaries, just like me, are going to be coming after me in order to try to claim the price on my head. And unless I'm very much mistaken, I think I saw one of them entering the quarry. I'm going to need to deal with this archer. Ow, stop that. Okay, that is a cultist guard. And that trumpet that you just heard means that there's a bounty hunter right next to me. Crap, there he is. Dodge that sucker. Let's get some poison working on him. Well, that presence of the cultist guard there confirms, as if I didn't already know, that there's a cultist nearby. Oh, bloody hell, a lion! <laughs> That's, that explains the name of the bounty hunter who's trying to carve me a new one. The lion born there. Great. Ow. Stop that. You're not funny. My poisons are on cooldown, but the bull rush knocked him over. Try to get some more. Ow. Dodge the lion. Come on. Let's kick him down. Oh, this guy can't be staggered. That's bad news, but we've nearly got him. In fact, we've got them both. Zenobia the Lionborn. Bounty Hunter, dead. That hasn't cleared the bounty, of course. It's just cleared the Bounty Hunter. There will be more on the way. 
and for a brief moment nobody appears to be trying to kill me. Right. Let's go and slap this little bitch. Yeah, he's not really much of a challenge at all. <laughs> it's even more of a snivelling little whelp than he was the first time we met him in the cave underneath the oracle. Kill confirmed. Ah, first piece of the Athenian war hero set. Which, as the name would imply, is particularly good if you're embarked upon the business of killing Spartans. So, that's Brizon dead. It's giving me the clue on this guy. Who's a leader facing rebellion on Delos. So we need to help the people of Delos to unveil him. And the first clue to the identity of the cultist sage in charge of that particular subsect. Now, let's go and see what Pericles wanted. <laughs> let's try not to get distracted along the way. Again. This time we need it. Uh, Jingles, if that's Pericles, you're going about this the wrong way. Well, there was just one more cultist. <laughs> this time, at the port of Nisaya in Megaris. Look, he's right there. Although, they appear to have been alerted to my presence. I'm just clearing up some loose ends before I start on a long and involved series of quests in Athens. Who did that? You should probably come over. Ah, crap, I've been spotted. Alright, so much for trying to be subtle. Try to lure that brute over with a well placed whistle. I got spotted by an archer off on the flank. And the cultist is making a run for it. Not on my watch, sunshine. Come back here. Actually, this is working out quite well, because it's taking me out of the restricted area of the military port. Hold still so I can shoot you. Yeah, you keep running. Let me know how that works out for you. She's quick. I'll give her that. No, 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 no. Don't go running back in. There, we got her. Good. Confirm this kill. What are we getting out of this one, Bob? Well, I don't know. Let's take a look. Okay, another clue. And the Slithering Belt. It's part of the snake set. I actually got the first piece of the snake set from Greek Ian McShane. It's a very nice set when it comes to doing assassinations. However, at the moment, I have other problems. I've got a three-star bounty alert on my head. <laughs> From all of the bloody murder I've been committing. Uh, so I should probably hide and wait for the heat to wear off. Those are reinforcements heading into the port. They did manage to light the brazier to summon reinforcements. I didn't manage to trap it. Uh, before embarking on my murder spree, and that's that's three bounty hunters looking for me. Although they are looking, uh, at least they're beginning to look, where I was first spotted. But they will start fanning out and tracking me down. So, how brave am I feeling? Do I want to take three bounty hunters on? Nah, that would be quite silly. Anyway, back to Athens. Our final job for Pericles involves rigging the results of an ostracism vote. Now, ostracism was the Athenian term for exile. And it would be voted on. The votes would be counted on these ostraka, uh, hence the term ostracism. And ostraka were just shards of pottery that the Athenians would use as tokens. In this case, as voting tokens to determine the result of the ostracism vote. Pericles be careful not to get spotted. isn't prepared to allow the results of this ostracism vote to be decided democratically. So we're swapping the tokens. Now, they're held inside the Logismos building here, which is heavily guarded. So I cannot afford to get spotted. Otherwise, they're going to know someone's tampered with the vote. So we're doing a spot recon first. 
Just trying to pinpoint the locations of all of the guards. Right. That'll do. Time to make our move. So, in. Don't get spotted. Swap the tokens. Out. Nice and simple. How are we going to get in without getting spotted? Better stay hidden. Yeah, we're good. So far. Nobody suspects anything. Okay, those two over there are going to be a problem. They're right next to the room where the Ostraka are being kept. Ah. Okay, I can't get down that way. That's a shame. Uh, stick around this way, maybe. Door's shut. Great. Can I go up over the top? Uh, not from that side I can't, but from here I can. And that staircase is not shut. Still there's two guards on the balcony. Ooh, this is going to be close. Help ourselves to some stuff while we're here. But that's where the Astraka are being held. We'll do this quietly. Okay, those are the real ones. And I've got the fake Astraka. Which I need to place in another room. Down there. Still haven't been spotted. This is good. Quietly. And we're outside. <sighs> right. Let's get back around the front. Well, I think we're going to go in again the same way we did the first time. What's that guard doing? Is he coming back up to take a position up front? He is. Is he going to see us? Nope. Okay, we're good. And back where we started. So, the room is underneath me. I can't get down that way. Mm, I don't know about this. What's all that fuss about? Who's shouting? It's nothing to do with me. I still haven't been spotted. <sighs> Need to be careful. Guy turns around. I could knock him out though. Don't have to kill him. Right. Oh crap, it's down another level. Oh, we'll help ourselves to some stuff while we're here. Okay, the guy guarding the entrance has his back turned to the courtyard. Nobody there. Those two might see me if I drop down them. How am I going to get into the room downstairs? And I can't afford to hang around either because the guard that I've knocked out could be discovered. Wait, is this guy coming upstairs? He is. Looks like I'm going to have to incapacitate this fellow as well. Yeah, he's coming in. He's going to see... You see, this is why you, you can't afford to hang around. Because he's going to spot the body. Unless I knock him out as well. And now I'm going to have to move. Wait, what's the gate guard doing? Is he, oh, he's not coming up here as well, is he? Let's move the body. No, he's not coming up here. Okay. 
Need to move quickly while he's got his back turned. And we've made it. That should do it. Job done. I should let Pericles's contact know. Now to get out of here without being detected. Well, helping ourselves to more stuff. There's a location objective in here. Burn some war supplies as well, but I really don't want to push my luck and risk being spotted. So, let's head back to Pericles' contact for the results of the ostracism vote. There he is. I did that job you wanted. It's done. Hmm. You work quickly. What are you going to do with them? Dump them in a well. Ah, it looks like the official has arrived. Here we go. The votes have been tallied. Overwhelmingly, the people have decided that Anaxagoras should be ostracized from Athens. Hang on a minute. Anaxagoras was an Athenian philosopher who was actually a close friend of Pericles. What, why would Pericles arrange to have him ostracized? Be slow to fall into friendship, but once you do, continue firm and constant. It will be more difficult for me now that Anaxagoras must leave Athens. We were quite close, although he and Pericles were much closer. It's strange, Pericles wasn't here today to defend him. In reality, Pericles did defend him at the ostracism trial. Ask anyone and they'll tell you Socrates. But a name gives you nothing. Our actions determine who we are, and every action has its pleasures and its price. With that said, then, who do you claim to be? I know the price of actions. I have to as a mercenary. That simple piece of information tells me more about you than your name ever could. Explaining oneself must be carefully done. Explaining myself would take more time than I have. Then let us focus on a single recent event. Tell me, as a mercenary, is there anything you wouldn't do? I'm open to negotiations. Everything has a price. And you're the one who decides when the pay is worth it. Yep. I don't have the luxury of turning down a job. What of duty, the greater good? Are they not their own kind of payment? Oh, I suppose so, yes. Some people might see duty as a good enough reason, I guess. The greater good is all we should care about. Easy to say if you've never worried about going hungry. I eat to live. But I do not live to eat. If you say so. You are clearly someone who would do whatever you feel is necessary. Perhaps for Drachmi, or maybe to further a personal goal. That describes a lot of people. I suppose I'm curious why you did it. How could I not be when you're the reason my friend is being forced to leave the only home he's ever known? Um, um... I did what I was asked to do. And your needs are greater than those of the man you helped ostracize. They ought to be. Still, you raise a fine point. Who is more responsible? Anaxagoras for getting himself mixed up in this? Or you, for simply sealing his fate? All right, all right, it was me. Fine, I'm more responsible. But I did it because I have one concern, myself. Then I hope you also think about today, about Anaxagoras, about choice. Socrates, there you are. Here I am. You're late. They're all waiting for you. I wish to see Anaxagoras' fate, and so I have. Tell them I'm on my way. Well, it seemed our conversation is at its end. Although I hope it isn't the final one we have. Oh, it won't be. I wouldn't know. And that was the legendary That's Socrates. Time to return to him and find out what these Athenians know about my mother. We're going to be seeing a lot more of him before this game is over. I wouldn't like to have to actually choose my favourite character in this game. But Socrates would definitely be in the top three. Anyway, job's done for Pericles. Hopefully, I've done enough to convince him that I can be trusted. And he can at least point me in the right direction of anybody who can help me find my mother. And here is Pericles' house. You heard? We'll be watching you, Miss Dios. Ah, at least give them a welcome first. Fine. Pericles welcomes you to his symposium. A symposium is just a posh Athenian word for a party. 
This is where Pericles entertains the brightest minds in all of Athens. Oh bloody hell! Cassandra, it's you. It's Phoebe from Phoebe. Kefalonia. You said you weren't coming back to Kefalonia, so I decided to leave too. I said I wouldn't be coming back, but I don't remember saying you should leave. Well, here I am. So what are you doing here? How did you even get here, Phoebe? Well, I did make some drachmi working for Marcos. So you paid someone to bring you to Athens? Not exactly. Phoebe? I needed a drachmi for when I arrived. I couldn't use it all to leave, and I didn't want to wait any longer. So I sneaked on a ship. Don't worry, nobody saw. I just can't believe you made it. I don't remember much of Athens from when I was a baby. But every once in a while, something feels familiar. It's nice. I can't believe you're here. Me either. I can't believe we both made it to Athens. It's so much different from Kefalonia. But what are you doing here? I'm here to get you ready. I have to make sure you leave all your weapons and change into these clothes. So you somehow work here? For Pericles? No, for Aspasia. Aspasia was Pericles' lover. Possibly wife, I nobody's really sure. You can't! Not like that, anyway. The Athenians like it best when you try to fit in. But don't worry, I have just the outfit for you. Nah, I'm good as I am. There's no way I'm wearing that. But if you don't... I mean it, Phoebe. You have to leave your weapons here, though. Oh. Fine. Just... just one dagger? <laughs> At least. <laughs> okay, fine. Don't say I didn't warn you. Is that everything? You're all ready to go in. Don't worry. You've done scarier things than this. I'm struggling to think of any right now. Are you sure I can't keep just one weapon with me? No weapons. Now hurry and go in. Oh, and don't leave without saying bye. All right. Oh, there's at least one friendly face in here. Hello, Herodotus. Here, Cassandra. The mighty mercenary and traveler has finally made her grand entrance. Only slightly late, too. Herodotus! Athenians have no problem letting me know when I'm not welcome. It's a relief to see your friendly face. Don't let the company here tonight intimidate you. I won't. Pericles is no king. He needs these guests to love him so that the people love him. And they, in turn, need Pericles. You're not different from any of them. Do you really think these people will help me? Perhaps you're individual fashion sense would get their memories working. Now then, let me introduce you to everyone. They may not look it, but this group holds the way to the future on the tip of their opinionated tongues. You may recognize some of these names. Ah, Sophocles and Euripides, for example. Two of the most celebrated playwrights to date. No one can throw stones as far as they can. They appear to be locked in some kind of intellectual struggle, as is their way. He's a writer of comedies, of all things. Comedies, every Pides. <laughs> oh, that's Aristophanes. He's a bit of a dick. I've heard of Sophocles. In my line of work, it pays to know who the richest and most famous men are. Hermipos has also written his fair share of comedies. You should drink more. Lately, his attitudes have garnered him more notice than his works. However, the fellow beside him, Protagoras, is a sophist worthy of as much praise as the great Socrates himself. Inviting Socrates seems like a good way to ruin everyone's night. I'm surprised they would let him in the door. Oh, don't let Socrates get under your skin. At least he wore shoes for the occasion. And the poor thing gesticulating like an ape is Thrasymachus. If you listen closely, you'll notice he and Socrates are actually arguing the same points. But the wind from his wild gestures deafens him to critique. That isn't at all what I mean. Where is Pericles? Oh. He never attends his own parties. Which reminds me, 
There's something I need to get his help with. Oh, don't leave me alone with this lot. Vile Socrates, always appearing where I least expect him. Warrior, protect me from his amorous gaze. Oh, Alcibiades, this is not a time for jealousy, but for love. And that is Alcibiades. <laughs> I love that guy. Uh, in a strictly platonic sense, of course. We'll be seeing much more of him later as well. <clears throat> uh, let's not use Alcibiades as an example. Be good and don't drink too much. So, tell me, what does a Mystios like you think of a party like this? This party could be fun. Alcibiades drinks like a Spartan. Maybe he fights like one too. If I could suggest anything, please don't start a fight. Or end one. Thank you, Irodotos. Now, if you'll excuse me, Pericles is here somewhere and I need to prepare him. If he's alone, I'll tell him what your brother said. Right, let's get this done. Agreed. Pericles needs to know. I'll stay here and look for clues. I hope they know something about your mother. Right then. Me too. Where to start? So, we now have multiple quests, all of which involve speaking and mingling with the various different Greek luminaries present at Pericles' party. Yes, you come and talk to this infuriator from your brother. I've had my feel. Perhaps later. First, explain to me your point again. Okay, Sophocles appears to have run away to hide in the kitchen, so let's talk to Euripides and Aristophanes, the playwrights. Amistheus in Pericles' abode? <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day. You must have seen me doing my impression of Hermippus. I call it the dejected weasel. <laughs> Tell me, what does it think? Did you just call me it? Did you just call me it? Watch your mouth, Athenian. It speaks, and so feisty too. Sometimes I wonder if I'm doomed to be the only young and beautiful thing here. So, what do they call you? Cassandra. Hmm, I wouldn't peg you as a Cassandra, but never mind. I'm Aristophanes, and this man is Evripides. He doesn't oh, talk much. On. Introduce yourself. I'm Evripides. I like him though. For a playwright, you're not much for words. Good men lead quiet lives, as old Evripides likes to say. Don't you, Evripides? <laughs> now, if you'll excuse us, I was just about to dazzle this old dog with my impression of Pericles. I call it the wooden board. The man is your host. Under every stone hides a politician, I always say. And Pericles is no different. Yeah, he's a total dick. But believe it or not, his heart is in the right place. Anyway, let's see what Sophocles is doing hiding in the kitchen. Amistios? Here? I suppose they've sent you to mock me for my fight with every Pides. <laughs> that wasn't a fight. I've seen lots of fights. That wasn't one. <laughs> <laughs> I really made a fool of myself this time, didn't I? I'm Sophocles, though I'm sure you knew that. And you are? I am looking for information that'll help me find someone. A Spartan woman. Mm, a Spartan woman in Athens. Sounds intriguing. Though, if you expect me to notice someone other than myself, you expect too much. You could talk to every Pides. He's the second most worldly man here. That ridiculous. Xanthodontus exothalmic Morosov. But he doesn't talk without a drink. I have no idea what that meant. No, you don't. Well, he's an asshole. So we get him drunk and he talks. He sounds more Argiv than Athenian. Impressive foreigner. Every Pidis is from Argos. All right. If nothing else, this party could use the help. You'll need to pick the right wine for this task. The kitchen should have what you need. Let me know when every piece is done in, and I'll slip away unseen. So which is the right wine? How do you know Pericles? I believe you mean to ask me, how does Pericles know you? I'm the greatest dramatist in the land, mentor to every piece. 
lover of Asclepios, father of theater, and so on, and so on. I'm sure it's a real honor to have you hiding in his kitchen. <laughs> you're awfully worked up over every piece. You sure you're just friends? I'm never just anything, foreigner. Though I confess, every Pidis and I hold a bond deeper than brotherhood. Why he slams it with a banal young plaything, Aristophanes, I will never know. So about that wine? I'll get the wine. Wonderful. Now, if you want some friendly advice, Aristophanes cannot stand sweet wine. I've seen what it can do to him. Absolutely, horrifyingly delightful. It wouldn't be a party without someone losing their stomach. I'll let you know if your plan worked. Finally. Right, so we need to find some sweet wine. You! You shouldn't be in here. What do you want? She's a bit mouthy for a slave, I'm isn't she? Sweet wine. <laughs> yes, take it. But get out of my kitchen. I'm very Whoa. busy. Whoa! <laughs> Hang on a second. Okay, we'll let that one slide. We've got the wine. May have to cause some trouble. It's come back for more! Care to see my impression of Protagoras? I call it the flapping bladder. He called me it again. <laughs> oh, I'm going to I'm enjoy sure this. When I need to relax, I start to fight. For you, though. Quickly, bring him some wine so that he might say something clever. After my argument with Sophocles, I think I'd rather keep my head clear. I like Euripides. You and Aristophanes could both use a drink. Let's play a game. A competition? Ah, wonderful idea. Every pity seems quiet, but he never turns down a challenge. Well, if you brought us some wine, I wouldn't be opposed to showing this young one how we argue drink. Let's do it. Let's conjure Dionysos, shall we? See the look she gives him there. <laughs> this, this is pure swill. Amateur. In my day, this would be considered nectar of the gods. Another round! Yeah, let's do it. Ready for more? Oh yeah, she knows. <laughs> yeah, I can hardly stomach this pig's piss. I could outdrink both of you with one hand. Let's have some more. Good idea. You ready for another? Results! <laughs> you, I like you. <laughs> you here? I brought myself. I'm on the trail of a woman who fled Sparta a long time ago. Fled? Why? She lost two children. She had no choice. She fled to heal a broken heart. Every pivis, write her into a play. I've heard Spartan mothers go to a sanctuary in Argolis to beg Asclepios for his divine pity. I should know, it's my home. After what she went through, I'm not sure she'd trust priests. Oh, then she sought my friend, Hippocrates. He's a physician, best of the best. He still keeps his office in Argos. If she went to him for help, there's no doubt he'd have given it. I love getting drunk and singing. Come back if you want to sing with me. I'll think about yeah, it. Yeah, maybe not. Hippocrates in Argos. Here I come. Result. We should probably go report to Sophocles now then. No doubt he's still skulking in the kitchen. Yeah, there he is. How's every this? Drunk, I hope. Oh, yeah. You can stop hiding in here. Everybody's won't notice you coming out. He won't notice anything. Hiding? <laughs> Heed this. War has come to Athens. First they take our homes, then they take our heads. I intend to be found with at least my dignity intact. Or what's left of it anyway. If you see Pericles, tell him I said thank you for another colorful evening. Your dignity intact, huh? Yeah, I think that ship's already sailed, Sunshine. Anyway, quest complete. There's our first clue. Hippocrates in Argus. Bottle of olive oil. Not sure why I'm going to need that, but it's a quest item, so I'll take it. Hello? What's going on down here? Oh, shit. 
someone's being hurt. Um, Open this door or I'll kick it in. Possibly Cassandra, but not in the way you think. Oh, 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 oh don't mind her. <laughs> she likes to watch. <laughs> mm. Look at you. <laughs> Such authority. Such. Uh, yeah. This is Alcibiades. I can see why Pericles has taken such an interest in you. Did you come to join us? Oh, it no. It sounded like someone was in pain. Well, it can sometimes be hard to distinguish between sounds of pleasure and pain. Had I known you were going to knock, I would have left my door wide, wide open for you. Oh, God. I thought this party was tame, even by Athenian standards. Until now. Let them have their meeting of the minds. I'm more interested in meeting other parts. Ali, we're out of oil again. Uh -huh. Ali? You know they like you when they give you a pet name. There's more olive oil in the kitchen. But Aspasia keeps complaining about me walking unencumbered through her symposiums. You mean naked? Mm, it sounds so good when you say oh, it. Oh dear lordy, lordy, lord. Luckily, I happen to have some oil. I come bearing gifts. <gasps> We're saved! Today, these women grieved for their sons, and these men worked the wall. But tonight, we forget all of that. Let's have some fun! What do you say? Care to. Join us. Hmm. Tempting. Well, let me think about this. Uh, no. Now, it's time for you to help me, Ali. I'm looking for someone. All business right until the end. I like that. Focus. I'm looking for a woman who fled Sparta a long, long time ago. Fled Sparta? No one flees Sparta, but let's pretend she did. If she were stupid, she'd be dead. If she were smart, she'd do what Aspasia did. She'd earn her independence. The smartest and most resourceful women I've ever met have been in Corinthia. He's talking about prostitutes. Vietera? I've heard they play some sort of role in Corinth, but I assumed it was the same as any other city. Oh, no. These women are unlike any other you'll meet. A force, and the only ones there with any smarts. Ali! Come back inside! Ooh, the celebration continues. When you reach Corinth, find Anthusa. No one goes in or out of the city without her knowing. Until we meet again, warrior. Anthusa in Corinth. It's not much, but it's a start. Although, to be strictly fair to the Hetere of Corinthia, just calling them prostitutes doesn't really do them justice. They were a lot more than that. But that's a second clue as to what may have happened to our mother. And as Aspasia, Pericles' lover, makes her entrance, I believe it's time to talk to Socrates. I admit, I'm surprised to see you here, but everything has a price, as you said. I can't help but wonder what price you paid to gain entry to the symposium. Keep wondering. You really intend to use this young destruction to avoid the point being argued? I'm going to regret this, but let's do it. You have been arguing a single point all night and no one has a black eye? You have my attention. We're discussing the nature of rules. We're better to do so than here. I'll ask you the same question I asked Thrasymachos. Would you agree that the act of ruling is an art? It is an art, as all worthy undertakings are. That is not up for argument. Yet, medicine is for the betterment of the patient and not the physician. Carpentry improves the building, not the builder. Then, is the art of ruling not for the betterment of the ruled rather than the ruler? Don't be absurd! Socrates does actually make a very good point. And yet I can't help but feel that regardless of the answer that I give, I'm going to regret it. This argument between you two is pointless. Perhaps. How do you 
the fine art. I'm not getting dragged into this. Very well. Answer this. Does the artist not give form and symmetry to her subject? Well, yes. Laws and justice do much the same for people, do they not? And is there any better way to communicate the story of a people than by revealing its customs and laws? If yes, then ruling, and thus justice, must be an art, as Thrasimacho says. If you say so. Aspasia. Oh, thank God for Aspasia. <laughs> I might get out of this with my ears intact. And there she is. The lover of Pericles. A hugely influential Greek woman. Not a native-born Athenian. She was actually born in an Athenian colony in what is now modern-day Turkey. But the fact that she was a foreigner, and also possibly a tax-paying courtesan, meant that she was free of the restrictions that confined married Greek women, and she was able to have a full public life in Athens. You shouldn't be too hard on Socrates. He really has a brilliant mind, even if he comes off a little strong. He isn't always like that, is he? Ah, Phoebe. Pericles has retired to the balcony already, has he? His ability to sneak off and sulk is second to none. I can go get him, and Cassandra can help. Everyone listens when she talks. That'll be fine. Run along. Cassandra will be right behind you. Now, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Aspasia. I had to go to great lengths to cover up your work in Megaris. I don't know what you mean. I made sure there were no witnesses. I did what I had to, and I'd do it again. I make no apologies. We do what we have to to survive, and there's no shame in that, believe me. Hmm. You make an interesting choice, Cassandra, in not dressing to fit in. Fit in? Fancy clothes wouldn't help me fit in. Your Athenian hitons are strange to me. You never really get used to them. It seems we have the attention of the entire room without a single eye being fixed on us. If you'd like to talk, do it now, and do it discreetly. Right, to business. I've been searching for a woman named Mirimi, my mother. I think she may be in danger, and my search brought me here. What clues do you have to her whereabouts? A physician named Hippocrates may have seen her in Argos. He's a good man. If you find a woman named Agathi there, do let her know Aspasia sends her regards. What else? Alcibiades gave me the name of a woman in Corinth. I'm sure he did. My dear friend, Anthusa, is the only one I know who's enjoyed a life in Corinth through legitimate means. Mostly legitimate, anyway. That's all I have. There is another option. In a former life, when I needed something done or someone found, I contacted a friend. An admiral of a sort. She means a What's pirate. His name? Her name is Xenia. When we last spoke, she was in chaos. A word of caution. When you go to her, be on your guard. Sea life makes a monster out of most people. She's a pirate. Thank you, Aspasia. When you're done, return here. Together, we will find who you're looking for. So, three now clues. Anthusa, of the Hetere, or courtesans in Corinthia. Hippocrates, the physician, in Argolis, or possibly the priests of Asclepios in Argolis, and now Xenia, a pirate queen, on the Aegean island of Chaos. For now, however, we have to go and convince Pericles to attend the party. Just have to find the silly old sod first. Where are the stairs? Ah, oh, there they are. Pericles, it's not polite to keep your guests waiting. Apparently, so I've heard. I don't know. I'm a mercenary. Ah, here he is. Cassandra? I don't recall sending for you, Miss Theos. Phoebe shouldn't have let you in here. Aspasia told me to come find you. She wants you to come down to the party. Uh. She says I don't interact with our guests enough. But these parties aren't for me. Technically, you're a guest. If you join Erodos and me, that should be enough for her, don't you think? 
You really don't want to go downstairs, do you? When your days are spent speaking in front of crowds, you begin to crave these moments of silence. Or as silent as I let it be, at least. <laughs> your life is in danger. Yes, yes, Herodotus was saying. This cult doesn't worry me. I have my life threatened by far worse people every day. I sincerely doubt that. My true concern is Athens. I fear for her future. You should probably take this cult seriously then. The Spartans aren't your real concern, Pericles. The cult is coming, and they're bringing their strongest weapon. Listen to her, Pericles. The Spartans are immediate. A cult's threat is ambiguous. I'm related to one of the cult members, and I believe him when he says they're coming after you. Sound counsel to consider. I'll be sure to let my men know, regardless. Aspasia sent me to see what's taking you so long. Tell Aspasia I'll be right there. I suppose this is where our conversation ends. Thank you again for helping me. I hope my guests are able to help you in your search. Time will tell. And with that, we're pretty much done with milking the guests of Pericles' symposium for information as to what may have happened to our mother Marini when she fled Sparta all those years ago. I can also tell you that there are two cultists present at Pericles' party, although we're not going to learn their identities until much, much later on. For now, it's time to pick up my weapons and get the hell out of here. You look tired. Only of conversation. I think that's the most talking I've ever done. See? You didn't need the weapon after all. Are you leaving? Oh yeah. I've had enough Athenian hospitality to last me a lifetime. You get used to it. It's nice. What are you going to do now? Well, that's actually a very good question, Phoebe. I can track down a pirate queen on Chios, the renowned physician Hippocrates in Argolis, or... There is a woman in Corinth I'd like to talk to. I've heard about that place from Alcibiades. He says you don't go there to talk. Alcibiades says a lot of things. He sure does. Well, actually, we're going to have to track down and talk to all three of them. But we're going to be starting in Corinthia. And all of that is going to be coming up in a future episode. Hope you've enjoyed this one. And we're going to leave the final words of this episode to young Phoebe. Not going to beg to come along this time? Nope. I'm happy here. And this isn't Kefalonia. That means you'll be back. That's very true. Plus, I really like working for Aspasia. She says she has a mission for me. I'll see you soon, Phoebe. Bye, Cassandra!